say hi. My name is Carrie Gray, and I am the AIC at Carrick Elementary right now. Hi, everybody. I'm Dominique Pleasant Moore. I'm the ELA Lee K through five, <clears throat> and I have a little allergy issue, so bear with me this morning. All right. So let's see. Um, are we good to go? Looks like it. All right, so we're going to present to you today how you can use pictures to promote critical thinking and writing. <clears throat> so we're going to take you on a little journey to the learning network today, and we're going to show you where to use this resource at the end of our presentation. So the learning network um, has partnered with visual thinking strategies to practice critical thinking and literacy skills using pictures. And I'm going to take you to their website and show you how they do this. So they take a photo, a picture, and they strip it of its caption. So when you go to the website, you will see the most current photograph that they've uploaded. So every Sunday evening, they will put a picture <clears throat> without a caption online and ask for people to join in a chat to describe what they think is going on in this picture. So when you click on the picture, it'll take you down here and you see, excuse me, you'll see down here this little chat button. Already 488 people have um, put a chat uh, message up here about what they think is going on in this picture. So students that are 13 years of age and older can actually create their own account on here to um, add their ideas to the chat on the learning network. However, many of our students are younger than that. So a lot of teachers are creating accounts and basically summarizing their students' ideas and then posting uh, what their students have come up with for the world to see. So down here, if you scroll down, it will give you directions and tell you what to do. And you can click on a full size image of the picture so that you can see it a little more clearly. It will tell you the questions that you're going to ask, which Dominique will hit on in just a minute. And then if you scroll down, um, it will tell you here that on Thursday afternoons, they post the big reveal. So they reveal what's actually happening in this picture on Thursday for all to see. So since this was just posted this week, they don't have the reveal up yet. So I'll take you to another picture and show you how you can go back and scroll to the bottom of any photograph. They have seven years worth of pictures on here. So you can go back and see any picture that you're interested in. And then if you scroll down to the very bottom, the reveal is posted there from previous pictures. Um, so you still have access to that. All right, so as we said, there's over 250 images over the past seven years. So you have a lot to choose from uh, when you're posting any of these for your students. So Dominique, do you wanna tell them about the questions? Yes, Carrie. Um, so Carrie showed you the image. So you'll post the image and then you're gonna ask your students these three open-ended questions. What is going on in the picture? What do you see that makes you say that? What more can you find? And we're also have we had the opportunity for Carrie to share a picture with a group of students and um, their responses. And what we she also got a chance to look again this week. And so in the beginning, when students are answering those questions, they may not give you a uh, really lengthy response and you just kind of start digging deeper with them and then once they get used to the process they start beating off of each other and coming up with um, different ideas and <clears throat> this helps <clears throat> them to think critically to think deeper there's just so many opportunities that you could use these pictures in your classroom um, for students to think critically yeah, and so Dominique, if I may just add, um, I forgot to mention the visual thinking strategy. So this curriculum that was co-created by Abigail House, she is a cognitive psychologist and Philip Yenowen, a museum educator. So they really created um, this idea to help students look closely at art. 
And the idea is that students can think critically and articulate their ideas through this activity using these three questions. So one thing, uh, or several things actually, we'll think you'll see as we go over um, the process is that students are able to make more complicated and detailed observations using these questions in a picture. They're able to infer meaning from their observations. They can base inferences on the evidence that they see going on in the picture. And then they can consider multiple inferences. So um, they might hold a variety of different views as plausible as they listen to their peers come up with different ideas. And then they can always go back and revise their thinking. So that's the beauty of, of this uh, process is that they can go back and revise and change their thoughts after they hear some of their other peers or teachers comments about what they think is going on. And then lastly, it gives them an opportunity to elaborate on their thinking. So we, um, Dominique, you ready to moderate? I am ready, Carrie. Okay, we're going to take you through the process because we think this is actually more fun when you're engaged and kind of get a feel of what it's like. So if you want to jot down these questions to help you remember what is going on in the picture, what do you see that makes you say that, and what more can you find? So at first, your first instinct is going to be just to kind of throw out there some general things that you see. See if you can make yourself go a little deeper into thinking why you think that's going on. All right, so I'm gonna click on this picture. And uh, what we want you to do is open up the chat for our session right now and live chat to us what is going on in this picture. So Dominique is gonna moderate and just kind of shout out to everybody things, different things that people are noticing and seeing and why you think that's happening. So Matt Bolka says, this is fun, but he's, he didn't answer the question. All right, oh, here we go, Cheryl, Cheryl Bibby. Yeah, Cheryl says, I think it's a celebration of some sort. Um, Deborah says, a parade, a celebration. Jessica's wondering what they are all looking at uh, that's above them. Seems kid-focused. Uh, Elizabeth, is this the day after quarantine ends? That's a good one. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> um, it's Jessica says it's hard not to be drawn to that red balloon. Yeah, I agree. It um Deborah said, is this a thank you to nurses and doctors? Uh, Matthew, it looks like they are outside a prison or hospital, maybe a memorial or service. Um, Elizabeth says, I wonder why he is holding the red balloon and if he's going to let it go. All right. Good job, everybody. Thanks for playing along. We love hearing your ideas through the chat, and we think you'll find the same joy when you pose a picture for your students and hear their excitement and their response. Um, we will show you the big reveal at the end of this presentation, so stay tuned for that. And Dominique's going to lead us through some of the benefits of using these pictures in this way. Okay, open-ended task that is accessible to all students of all ages and stages in development. By showing a picture, any student K through 12 can um, use this as a way to get students talking and thinking. Um, it honors each and every student's contribution. Everybody has a voice. Um, it builds critical thinking skills, builds language skills. Um, it's building that discourse. It's uh, creating, allowing you to create a community where students feel um, they can share their thoughts and ideas. Um, it engages students in looking closely and noticing, helps students to interpret meaning, requires that students provide evidence for their thinking. They can't just say, oh, I see this. They have to give us uh, evidence for why they think that. And it enhances writing abilities. Yeah, there are so many benefits. And, and one that's not listed on here is just the pure joy of this activity with your kids, mm -hmm. right? So we want to make learning super fun. And I'm going to share with you in just a minute some ways that I was able to see that live in the classroom. 
Um, so next we're going to walk through just some ways we think you can use this through NTI. Um, because we have such an advantage right now to be able to post things online and have kids respond in different ways. Um, so a couple of ideas are just to post a picture in Google Classroom and put your three questions up and see what your kids might come up with in stream and allow them to comment on each other and you can comment back to them. Um, a new addition that we added this week is Jamboard. Um, Jamboard is becoming a really fun tool and we're going to share with you in a minute a way to do that. Um, it's always um, a great idea to do this through a live Google Meet because when students are live with you in person and talking, you can probe them and prompt them a little bit further for some more details really easily. Uh, and you can offer this as a writing prompt. So maybe consider having a weekly what's going on in this picture journal that you will do every week with kids. Um, it could be an introduction to a project or a compelling question where you can put a picture up and see how you can engage students thinking and get them excited about what's the learning that's coming up. Um, and then of course, it'd be a good voice board activity. So I'm gonna get off here because I wanna show you uh, this example really quick. Um, Dominique mentioned that we were able to get into a classroom and last week um, I was able to jump into Danielle Warren's fourth grade classroom at Carrick Elementary and uh, I'm not sure if you can see this. Let me make it a little bigger. Hopefully that'll help a little. I know it's hard to see on this small screen. So what I did is I took a picture and I just um, used the link straight from the full size picture from the website and linked it here in Google Stream and asked the students to join me in the fun task and told them that I would meet with them on Google Meet that day during their teacher's office hours to talk with them about this activity. And I posted the three pictures and asked them to just comment in the stream. So here were bunches of their comments. Um, they said things like people were walking on a bridge with grass under it. They see grass and leaves and people. Uh, they think there's water and grass. It looked like small boats. So they were giving little comments here and there about different things they saw. And I jumped back on and encouraged them to give some more details. So I just told them, hey, I see all of these great comments you're putting on here um, and that you're noticing a lot of things about people walking on boats and it's a bridge of some sort. Can you give any more detail? So I'm just trying to prompt them a little to see what else they'll add. And then I was able to go in and these are specific comments to um, specific students about their noticing and giving them feedback. The um, live Google Meet was probably the most thrilling time of my week last week. The students were so excited about this, could not stop talking about this picture and their ideas. Um, and the more that we talked about it, the more they came up with. And so what happened after the big reveal, so I went back on that same post the next day and told them I would be back to tell them the big reveal to come and join me. So a bunch of students showed up for the big reveal. And once I told them what was going on, they were just thrilled to hear that their ideas were validated. Mm -hmm. um, but it made them even more curious about what was going on in the photographs. So it took the learning way further than I ever thought it would because then they suddenly wanted to get on Google Earth and start investigating where these people lived and what was really going on in the surrounding area. And after that, they were begging their teacher to do research on this. So it really took their thinking way further than I ever thought it would. Um, and so I asked them when we were finished, what were some things they thought about this activity? Sorry, I just messed that up. And they say, they said, it's like a game where you guess, and I love guessing games. It's fun because you're trying to use your knowledge to guess things and find out what's going on in the picture. And another student said, after everybody talks about it, you can go back and add more thoughts. So one of the fun things uh, <laughs> that we did this week was added on Jamboard. So here's a new photograph. Um, and we went back, added it on Jamboard, and you can see the students were posting all their thoughts with these little sticky notes. One of the things Dominique and I spoke about after seeing this is um, how much more detailed their thoughts are just one week later after doing this activity. The majority of these sticky notes included something they noticed and, and some evidence to support 
um, their reasoning for what they think was going on. And then you see the little sticky notes here are students agreeing or disagreeing with their peers. So they went back to add more comments, um, agreeing or disagreeing using the smaller sticky notes. And so one of the things real quick, guys, I want to point out is specific feedback. You are modeling specific feedback and the kids are uh, obviously picking up on it. Uh, I used to teach blogging in when I was an elementary school classroom teacher and with my kids. And the hardest thing for kids was when they would leave comments on each other's blogs, they'd say they'd want to do stuff like cool, nice, awesome. I like it uh, with a thousand exclamation points. But um, you, you had to work hard and drill into them specific feedback. What do you like? Uh, what do you agree with? And you've got on here, I agree with because, I mean, that's just so powerful when you're teaching specific feedback to kids and you're modeling that. So that's really cool. Yes, we were really excited to see this. We were super excited. I, and I got really excited when Carrie showed me how they were responding to other students. And you're like, wow, and, it, and this has only been a week. Can you imagine after several months of what kind, types of conversation and discussion or debates that could occur in your classroom um, just by using a simple picture? Um, so Danielle Warren is a really fun teacher and she also did this Jamboard activity. So these are the same students. And what we discovered is that they love it so much, she's gonna create more fun things. So that photograph with the sheep, um, she was going to have them create a story from the sheep's perspective and, and kind of challenge them to do some additional writing with it. So super fun way to get our students engaged in critical thinking and writing right now. All right. So, Dominique, you want to take us through how this can help us um, lead to some deeper thinking? Yeah, connect. It helps connect uh, to reading workshop. We believe we could use this to start your reading workshop on a Monday and kids can take it to take it during the workshop and respond, um, have discussions and also, like we said, debates about what's going on in the picture. You could use this to introduce introduce a story, a standard, a new idea and any content. Um, it can be an introduction to PBL unit um, using memes to promote critical thinking. Um, we also uh, talked about some other ways or other things you can use to spark that critical thinking. And um, you could ask what's going on in this song, you know, screen, a scene in a play, illustrations in a story, engagement piece to begin an art lesson and study an artist. When you go to uh, the website, they also have what's going on in this graph which could lead to things you can use in science or for math. Um, it's just a wonderful resource that Carrie and I have absolutely fell in love with. And every week we get more excited about what we can do with it and what we can um, share with teachers that they'll be able to do with it during NTI and also when we get back into our classrooms. Yes, I see um, very much a use for this in the traditional classroom setting and definitely right now is for an NTI. So we promised you the big reveal and here it is. So um, this photograph, the caption actually read, students of the Islamic Educational College School celebrated Teacher's Day in Amman, Jordan. Hundreds of students released balloons, which were tagged with handwritten paper messages as part of the festivities. Um, so we chose this because we absolutely agree that our teachers should be celebrated. And uh, someone mentioned this might be our celebration day after quarantine, and this might be our celebration day for teachers after quarantine for all the hard work that they are doing right now for our students. That, that also looks like the celebration I'm going to have when I, I get to send my 18 month old back to daycare. <laughs> so, <laughs> you and probably many parents that are trying to work and homeschool at the same time. All right. So, Dominique, um, we're going to walk you through how you can find this resource. So, Dominique, you want to take them? Yes, yeah, sure. This, uh, our uh, slide is also linked on uh, the page that you can click on. Uh, you just go to NTI Teacher Toolkit. 
And once you click on the toolkit, you're going to go to teacher, uh, teaching and learning resources and you'll uh, click on ELA and then scroll down and just click on what's going on in this picture and it'll take you right there and you can also in any search engine just type in what's going on in this picture and it will take you there also so and also in case you don't know there are so many resources available on this ela page um, this was just one that we thought was really amazing for this nti work but there are really a lot of choices here for teachers to go on um, these will prove really effective you to go on and check those out. Um, we've also linked it down here at the bottom for you right there. So does anybody have any questions? I feel like we got through really fast today. I know. Um, everybody's loving all the loving the activity. Um, I wonder. Just saying, excellent tool and thank you. Well, let's take a crack at the one they just posted. Um, uh, yeah, let's do yeah. it. Yeah, I got, I got some ideas here. Okay. All right. So my thinking is this is somebody who's just gotten out of the hospital, uh, recovered from COVID-19, and the nurses and uh, doctors are, are taking pictures and celebrating. Mm, I like that. Yeah. I like that thought. Or maybe they're celebrating all of the doctors as they walk in. Maybe these are all the nurses celebrating all of the doctors as they walk in for the morning. That's a good thought too. Absolutely. Although I don't see anybody wearing a mask there, so I'm not. Yeah, yeah maybe it's not the COVID nineteen. Good point. <laughs> hmm. Huh. Yeah. These are some older cameras, are they not? Yeah, that's what I was noticing too. The older cameras. Yeah, those aren't. Those aren't. Those don't look like iPhones. So no. Right. That's a good. <laughs> Oh. And maybe they're, you know, I'm seeing name tags too. So noticing name tags, uh, man, like you can go just so deep with this activity, like the things you just notice. Uh, now I wonder if a kid, a kid might not pick up on the older cameras, but as adults, we're like immediately that just strikes out to us. Hmm. Pretty neat. Uh, wow. Let's see. Thing it's interesting they're all wearing hair nets where maybe if they were in a hospital they would be wearing what are the caps called that the nurses and doctors wear oh yeah good point so this might be like a meat processing plan or something oh no yeah um, someone shared my son says people watching heroes come out of work hmm yep um matthew says i think this is some kind of research institute maybe all right, and then you see Deborah's comment there: meat packing plant and president is the president is coming at oh, it's the president of the meat packing plant. Mm -hmm. It's a big deal when the president of the meat packing plant comes. <laughs> I wish I could zoom in to see what this tag on their um, jacket reads. That's a good point. Yeah, it's hard to see. Yeah, that that would be a good thing too. Like I wish, like you know, what's one thing you wish you had? Another detail you wish you had? Ooh, yeah, yeah. Neat. Well, thanks. I mean, this is awesome, guys. Thank you for this. Uh, this this session always gives me so many ideas. Uh, I'm really excited about this. And um, if you guys need these resources, you know where to go because they did a good job explaining where to get those. Mm -hmm.